We're going to be talking about migrants, refugees, and citizenship. Like climate change, this topic is connected to everything. We'll be talking about four different case studies on refugees and migrants and in, in context of new media. And it's important for you to understand this, to become a better citizen and to understand your rights. What does it mean to belong somewhere and what does it mean for others to not belong somewhere? This topic contains a lot of graphic material and I do want you to look at it even though it seems a little bit disturbing. But in seeing it, you get to understand how people live on this planet currently and what we have to do with that. So first, I wanna go over some of the terms, refugees versus migrants. And as we did in our first subject, we understand that a refugee is someone who has to leave their region, whether that be to economic reasons, war, climate, or some sort of strife. And because they have to leave, they become a migrant. They have to immigrate, they have to go somewhere else. But the idea of immigration or migrating is usually done voluntary. You usually decide you wanna go somewhere to that will support you better. Migrants are people that are moving usually on their own volition, whereas refugees are people that are put in the situation involuntarily. But refugees become migrants and they have to go somewhere. But I think we have to understand the bigger picture here. We often get our information about migrants and refugees through our news media. And that's a good place to get it, but it often doesn't give us the real large picture of it. And that's because one, the material's very graphic. We get things that we don't really like to hear. We don't like to see human suffering. So that's something we don't usually cover. Two, bringing light to this often brings us to the sense of what we, what our role is as United States citizens in the larger role of the refugee crisis globally. And three, oftentimes it's hard to discuss what that means to have the other around or to be with somebody you're not fully understanding or to mix with different cultures. Today's a very tough time for migrants. We hear a lot of news about it and we often think of it as true. When we hear that there's a, a problem or an influx of migrants in the United States, we're not really getting the true information of that. We as United States citizens have only accepted 10,000 Syrian refugees. For comparison, Lebanon, which obviously has a lot less people than we do, one in five of their citizens is a refugee. One in five. We have 10,000 out of 320 million. And so it just go, goes to tell you what those things are. But oftentimes we don't even really understand what statistics of the United States are anyway. We don't really get a sense of the larger picture and why there's inherent structural problems inside of our country. We hear the information, we think, oh my gosh, there's this many, but that's because the news media, like with climate change, often covers it from a both sides point of view, making it look like it's 50-50 on every subject, when it isn't 50-50. So just to give you an example of numbers, about 50% of the United States is white and 50% is people of color. And then when you're asked, well, how many people are actually black? It's 12%. And those numbers are pretty important because it gives us a sense of overwhelming coverage that happens that often isn't true and is often exploited for the means of ratings. It's often done to create rally cries or some sort of anxiety that get people all riled up and also make them want to be part of something that either stops forward progress or moves forward progress. That partisanship of information is not helpful. Being a community member is much more helpful than somebody who takes a side one way or another. Keeping an open mind is one of the most important parts of this class. A citizen of somewhere is someone who's able to understand multiple points of view and then figure out their point of view on top of that. And that's a goal that I have for you by the end of this. Additionally, you're going to be responding to how you would cover this type of information, what you would do to spread this, the awareness of the refugee crisis. This is going to help you on your last project when you become an activist. How do you get people to understand your topic? There's four case studies I want you to look at. The first one is the Mara Nostrum Project. The Mara Nostrum Project is uh, a rescue ship operation that took place in the Mediterranean. And the photo that you're looking at here, which I want you to take a second and look at, I also have it below is by uh, Massimo Sestini of Italy. And take a look at the photo. What do you see? You see a lot of people being rescued from the Mediterranean after their boat had capsized. Over 700 people were, were rescued during this operation. They were rescued because oftentimes when migrant ships are moved, and in this case, these are Libyans that were coming from Libya to Italy, they hire a pilot or a boat captain who's gonna bring them across the water. But that's not, a, that's not legal at all. So a lot of times the boat captain leaves just before entering uh, the waters of the land. So when they reach Italy's border, they jump off the boat or get, they get into a dinghy and leave, leaving the entire ship full of people on their own. They don't know how to pilot the ship. So oftentimes the, the open water tosses them overboard, hundreds of people in the water. So in this picture, you actually see a rescue ship. But take a close look. Who's on this ship? 
When you look closely, you can see this is mostly men and some children. Why? What is it? Why would there be mostly men and children on here? When you're a refugee, you have to understand that you're going somewhere. And when you go somewhere, your first thing that comes to mind is, can I be employed? Can my labor be used somewhere else? So due to the way that the world is working, a lot of this labor will be manual labor. So families send their husbands and the children for safety. So the men and the children usually get placed onto the bo on board and the children get placed into custody and safety while the men go to work. And this is something in order to make sure that where you land, you become safe and you don't get put into some sort of camp that keeps you inoperable. So this is something we don't think about. But there's a lot of criticism of this, of this image by Sestini. The criticism of this image is that we get to see all of these migrants as a group of people. And in seeing them as a group, we are not able to humanize them. We only see them as an influx of people coming to a border. We get this reaction to it that doesn't really give us the truth of the issue. So we're gonna take a closer look. The next one is a bit more graphic. We're gonna be looking at the story of Amran Deknish, a Syrian boy whose house was blown up during a Syrian airstrike in which his own government blew up his house. This video is graphic and contains a lot of bloody material, but I want you to watch it and it's very important. So what you saw in this video is a little boy and his family being rescued from a blown up house. But let's analyze this video a little bit. What you see is the rubble and people rescuing. The video begins with Amran sitting in the ambulance. And what he does is he looks and he recognizes that he's bleeding. He doesn't realize it is first because he's literally shell-shocked. He was just literally blown up while he was in bed. When he touches his head and sees the blood coming off of it, he sees it on his hand. And his reaction isn't scared, but embarrassed. He realizes at that moment he doesn't know what to do with the blood, so he wipes it on the seat. And he looks around as if he's not sure how to do it. That embarrassment is human. What you're looking at is this small boy who's not only scared and unsure of what just happened, but someone who's afraid of getting the place in which he's been rescued dirty. Because he's just a small boy who doesn't know much, but he has his human qualities of caring and being a good person to other people. Now even more scary, he's got to go somewhere. His house is blown up. Aleppo, the town in which he was in before it was airstriked, it can, he can no longer live there. Where's he gonna go? Can he go to a family member's house? Is he able to stay at a family member's? Does he have to go and migrate somewhere else? And who will accept him? As I asked you with the climate change question, do the people want him where he's going? And how in his little mind and his family's mind do they know where he'll be safe and he could grow up as a normal little boy? Imagine being blown up as a child. Now you've got to figure out not only how to become safe again, but how to grow up and how to be a human. This is something that we, as citizens of the United States, don't think about at any point. We never have to worry about a missile coming through our house or waking up every morning and listening to the possibility of being blown to bits. We simply walk around. Now, that might not be the case that much anymore for young people who are in high schools when we hear about the gun safety issues. But when we hear about bombings and airstrikes coming from your government, that is something we just don't have. And Amran has to live that way. Now the next example is even more graphic. It's the story of Island Kurdi. And so this image is somewhat disturbing and I want you to look at it. Island Kurdi is a refugee who wet, washed up dead on the shore of Turkey. And here's a, a soldier picking up his body. This image is of a boy whose life was lost when his boat overturned in the ocean and his whole entire family washed up on shore, as well as many other people. He was seeking a better life because his land was no longer capable of supporting him. 
and in turn he died for that. He has no place of origin and now he has no place of life. And all because something had happened to his original land that no longer allowed him to be where he can be. And due to that, he can no longer live. This little boy's image becomes something that should awaken us the idea that young children all over the earth are dying, not in the place in which their land is damaged, but in the effort to become better. Their safety is never ending hard. You cannot be safe anymore as a refugee. You no longer have citizenship. So that brings us to our point. Citizenship and rights. What does it mean to be a citizen? What does it mean to grow up in the United States? You're very fortunate to grow up in the United States where you are a citizen of the land. And in doing so, you were born into a place that was giving you a constitution and a bill of rights. So the constitution ratified in 1789 gives you the ability to be not only distinct and unique from the previous government that was there, but also protects you from that government so they can't do these types of things to you and gives you the rights to stand up against that. The Constitution, when written, needed to, when once ratified, had to be amended. That's your Bill of Rights is the uh, ability to have amendments to them because no document is forever. But oftentimes we don't think about our rights. We don't ever consider them because we take them for granted. That's the privilege of being in a free country. The privilege of it is you don't wake up every day and think about what your rights are. You just simply have them. They just exist. And that's something that we just can express ourselves. Where if you were in another country, if you were in Britain, for example, and you started shit talking the queen, you could potentially be detained for that because it's not in your rights to be able to do that. Here, if you want to shit talk the president, well, go ahead. Sure, you might get yelled at, most likely on the internet, but in many cases, this isn't going to be a way of you becoming detained because you have a freedom of speech. You have that right. Some of our amendments are, are then re-amended. Remember that too. You could always have them amended again. Look at rights 18 and 21. 18, ban liquor, and 21 was like, man, that was a bad idea. So you can amend those too. But oftentimes those amendments are recorrected through the Supreme Court, our SCOTUS. The Supreme Court actually makes new amendments to it, and those are through lawsuits, which is how we get the restrictions on the First Amendment. There's two restrictions on the First Amendment. One, you can't yell fire in a theater. It means no threats to national security. That's an amendment through a law, uh, lawsuit. The other one is libel. You can't write false information on print and have it printed and distributed without the penalty of repercussions. That's how those amendments become updated. So sometimes it's not a constitutional amendment to an amendment, but sometimes it's a, a Supreme Court law that changes it. But in that way, as you being a citizen of the United States, you don't have to ever really consider what it means to be a citizen because these rights are given to you. They're literally given to you on birth. By waking up as a baby, you get these things. Each country has their own citizenship and rights until they don't. And so in the case of Amran Deknish, when he has to leave his country, his rights are lost from him. And the last case study is that of the cell phone. Oftentimes we get this misconception of what it means to have a cell phone when you're a migrant or a refugee. You often see people with a smartphone wherever they go. And you hear this idea of why would they have a smartphone? If How can they afford this if they can't afford X, Y, or Z? And that's a complete misconception that we hear in the mainstream media, or we hear from people's bites that are vastly uncorrected. And in that uncorrected nature, it becomes very problematic to how we understand the, the, what these phones do. Not only do they keep us contacted with our family, but they're also in the ways in which people transfer money. I mean, you do it through Venmo, or you do it through PayPal, or you pay for your Uber that way. Very similar in the status of how it works in the refugee crisis. When I worked with a nonprofit last summer who worked with uh, refugees that were moving from Senegal to Italy, they had to cross 1,200 miles of land before they reached the Mediterranean coast, and then they had to get on a, on a boat to get to another land that they don't know if they'll even be okay at. That process is difficult because they literally lose everything. They lose all their clothes. They lose every belonging except their smartphone because this is the only way in which they could pay for their way. Even more dangerous to our future is to understand what these smartphones do. That embedded in this technology is GPS and tracking software and materials that will change the way that we're tracked into our future. That's for the next thing that we're gonna be learning and you're gonna hear a lecture or a TED talk from Zenep Tofeki, who's going to be talking about what it means to have these smartphones as it is and what that data does to you. So in that connection to everything around us, you know that these smartphones are both our savior and the device in which that controls us and tracks us. So in response, what I want you to do in the discussion board is this. I want you to consider how you would make people more aware of the refugee crisis. 
What ways would you talk about it with others? Would you show them pictures? Would you talk about it one-on-one? -on -one? Would you talk with NGOs? Would you do more research? In this project, I want you to go online and find at least one organization that's helping refugees, and I want you to share it in the discussion board. And from that link, I want you to explain, uh, do a very quick summary on what this organization does to talk about it, and if they, you believe that this is their method is a good method to be using. All you have to do is find one and agree or disagree on that, but I also want to know what your method is for spreading that information as well.